In this video here, we're going to take a look at integration using partial fractions. So by using partial fractions, we can evaluate trickier integrals such as this one here. Now, I think it's fair to say then that when we look at this integral here, right, there is no immediate method that jumps out at us that we could use to tackle this integral. But by using partial fractions here, we can rewrite algebraic fractions such as this integrand here into a form that is easier to integrate. And it should go without saying here, but you do need to be confident with partial fractions before continuing with this video. So let's just have a look then at how we would find this integral here by using partial fractions. So let's just get started then with this example here. So we want to find the following integral. And clearly we need to use partial fractions then to evaluate this integral. So it should be obvious, but Clearly, the first thing that we need to do then is split the integrand up. So that's the thing that we want to integrate here into partial fractions. And just notice as well then that our denominator here factorizes to give x plus 3 times x plus 2. So in that case then, our integrand here, the thing that we want to integrate, we can rewrite that into partial fractions. So we get a over x plus 3 plus b all over x plus 2. Okay, so in terms of finding a and b here, so in other words, just splitting this algebraic fraction up here into partial fractions at this point, hopefully pretty trivial. I won't go into a massive amount of detail, but this is what you should get here. So a in that case is 2, and b is equal to minus 1. So what that means then is we can now rewrite our integrand here, this algebraic fraction, into its equivalent partial fraction decomposition. And if we do that then, what we're now evaluating is the integral of 2 all over x plus 3 minus 1 over x plus 2 here. And of course we're integrating with respect to x still, that doesn't change. And now at this point here, evaluating this integral is much easier than evaluating this integral here, or in its current form now. Okay, Obviously they're equivalent, but integrating this is much easier than integrating this. And if we integrate this here then, what do we get? Well, just notice here then, the derivative of my denominator here for this first fraction is 1, my numerator is 2, so in that case then we get 2 ln of x plus 3, and then for this fraction here, if we integrate this um, with respect to x, again, pretty similar to what we just obtained here, you know, we get minus ln of x plus 2. And of course, don't forget the plus c here, right? Our constant of integration. And you might also be asked to express this as a single logarithm. In that case, then, the integral of 2 all over x plus 3 minus 1 over x plus 2 with respect to x here would be equal to the natural logarithm of x plus 3 all squared over x plus 2. And again, we just include the plus c here. So there we have it. That is how we would evaluate an integral such as this one here, then, by using partial fractions. So to finish with here, let's just work through one more practice question together. So let's just have a go then at this one practice question here. So starting off with part A then, which wants us to show that this algebraic fraction here can be split up into partial fractions, where A and B are constants to be found. Now hopefully, the first part of this question here, part A, just splitting this algebraic fraction up into partial fractions is nice and easy, okay? Um, we'll run through it anyway. So to do this, what we do then is we get the right-hand side here over a common denominator. So in that case, we get a times x minus 1. And then we get plus b times x minus 2 here. So b times x minus 2. So in this case here then, my common denominator here would be x minus 2 times x minus 1, which just notice then is the exact same as the denominator for the left-hand side. So what that means then is my numerator here is equal to this numerator here. So in that case, this is equal to 2x minus 1. And what we now need to do then is eliminate both a and b. And the way that we can do that then is by using substitution. So for example then, if we let x equal 2 here, so if we let x equal 2, then what would happen is for the b term here, this would be b times 2 minus 2, which is 0. So the b here just disappears, right? So in that case, we can then go on to solve for a. So what do we get here? So we get a times 2 minus 1, so that's just a. 
and this is equal to, because as we've mentioned, right, this term here is zero. So that is equal to two times two, which is four minus one, giving us three there. So in that case, then a is equal to three. So now if we let x equal one here, in that case, this term here would be zero because a times one minus one. So a times zero is just zero, right? In that case, then we can now go on to solve for b. So in that case, then what do we get here? Well, we get b times one minus two, so that's minus b. And this is equal to two times one, which is two minus the one, giving us one there. And in that case, then we can see that b is equal to minus one. So to finish with then, let's just express it in this form here. So therefore, so we have two x minus one all over x minus two times x minus one. And this is identical to, so we have a over x minus two where a is three. We have three over x minus two plus b over x minus one. Now don't forget then that b is equal to minus one. So what we get here then is minus one all over x minus one. Okay. And as we already mentioned, right, I don't need to write it down again. We've already stated it here. A is equal to three and B is equal to minus one. So there we have it then. That gives us the solution to part A. And to finish with here then, let's just have a go now at the very last part of this question, part B. So for part B then it says, hence show that this integral here, so we're integrating two X minus one all over X minus two times X minus one with respect to X is equal to this result here where C is just an arbitrary constant. So for part B then, where do we begin here? Well, I think the first thing to really notice here then is this integrand, that's the thing that we're looking to integrate here, is the exact same as this algebraic fraction here that we had in part A. And just notice as well then, that in part A, what we did here is split this algebraic fraction up into its partial fraction decomposition. And the reason that the question is structured in this way here is so that it allows us to easily find this integral here. Because all we're going to do now is rewrite this integrand here into its partial fraction decomposition, which we've just found then in part A. So as we've just mentioned, right, let's just begin then by rewriting the integrand here into its partial fraction decomposition. So we have the integral here then of so we've got three over x minus two. So three over x minus two minus one over x minus one. Okay. And again, we're integrating with respect to x here. So that doesn't change, right? And at this point here, even though these are identical, right? These two expressions here in this form, it's much easier to integrate, right? And that's the whole purpose of this video and this integration technique. So what we can do here is use linearity and split this integral up here into two separate integrals. You don't have to do this, but if you've not really done much of this integration before, it might be easier if we just split this up. So what I've got here then is the integral of three over X minus two with respect to X minus then the integral here or minus the integral of one over X minus one. And again, this is with respect to x here. So hopefully then you recognize the integration technique here. So the derivative then of my denominator here is one, my numerator is three. So we can adjust this here then, and what we get is three ln of our denominator. So three ln of x minus two. So three ln of x minus two there, like so. Now for the second integral here, we have one over X minus one. So the derivative then of my denominator here is one and numerator is one. So it's perfect here, right? So we get minus ln of our denominator, so minus ln of X minus one. And then finally here, don't forget the plus C. Okay. So we're not quite finished here because just notice then the required form here is slightly different to what we've just got here. 
So to finish with then, all they've done here is express this difference of logarithms as a single logarithm. Okay. So what we can do here then is use the power rule for logarithms. So we can bring the three up as a power. And then for a difference of logarithms such as this here, we write that as a quotient as they've done here. Okay. Let me just make a note here then. So now express as a single logarithm. So now express as a single log. So in that case then, what we get here is the following. So we get the natural logarithm of, so like we just said then, the three comes up as a power. So I get x minus two to the power of three, exactly as they've got here for this numerator. x minus two to the power of three. And because this here then is a difference of logarithms, we write, we write that as a quotient, as they've done here. Okay, so that's all over then. X minus one, like so. And don't forget as well our plus C here. Exactly, as required. Okay, so as required there. And there we have it, question complete. So hopefully then, this solution here has made it a little bit clearer how we work through questions such as this one here, right, where we're using integration um, with partial fractions. Okay. So as we mentioned, right, this is our solution here to part B. This was the solution to part A. And that gives us the solution then to the one practice question for this video here. And that actually brings us to the end then of this video here on integration using partial fractions.